All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our Wednesday webinar series. My name is Garrett Anderson. I'm the Marketing Director for Contract Furnishings Mart. We're back here in the home base, the mothership, our Tiger location, and we're talking carpet today. We have a very special guest, Carrie Taylor. Uh, she's been our Fabrica rep for 30 years, so clearly there may not have been any child labor laws when you started. <laughs> sure didn't. Uh, but the, you know, she's going to walk us through, obviously, some of her line and Fabrica, but we're also going to talk just generally carpet, what you need to know about the construction, <laughs> some trends that are going on right now, uh, things to consider before you buy to make the right fit for you. Um, and that's, again, you know, we, we've talked about this in our previous sessions. Our purpose here at Contract Furnishings Mart from the sales team is to ask those questions, to find out what your needs are. And so we'll touch on that a little bit as we go through because there's not one item that is perfect for everyone. Each house is a little bit unique. And so we'll talk about some of those things that, that uh, go into those decisions. So Carrie, let's talk about some of the pretty stuff, which you have a lot of. Uh, so what are you seeing as far as trends right now in carpet? Well, trends really have been leaning towards pattern. Um, we have done a lot of patterns always, but more so in the past because we're finding there are less and less car there's less and less carpet going into the house because there's a lot of hard surface going into the house. Thanks a lot. So HGTV, yeah, right? exactly. Not for you. <laughs> but because there's less carpet in the house, people are able to make bolder statements. Um, design is a really big deal. So is color. It's always an emotional buy. It's kind of like buying clothing. Um, it is a textile. So when you're buying it. The emotion comes from the touch, the feel, the color. One thing that we do as fab with Fabrica is that we create really, really large color lines. So we give you many, many ways to find your color. And we can also cross over and do custom dyes, which I'll get into a little bit later, um, with most of our nylons, almost all of our nylons, and a handful of our wool. But what we find trending now is patterns. And Barcelona is fairly new, but what we're doing now is a lot of mixture of fibers. So what Barcelona has going on is the mixture of a fiber that has a bit of a sheen to it and a duller fiber. So the mixture gives you the feeling that there's maybe a, a bit of metallic going on. What we're seeing with colors now is the movement into maybe a warmer hue. The grays are not as prevalent anymore. So we're moving to a warmer color palette and some of the grays are still apparent, but we're finding many, many more warm colors topping our boards, which is where we usually put our strongest um, uh, uh, focal point for color. So you'll see all of the new um, warmer tones, and a lot of that comes from the uh, new um, focus into uh, mid-century modern. So you're finding a lot of warmer, neutral tones. Let me sit here. Well, as I say, you, you mentioned earlier that more white walls are exactly. in homes too. So that gives you more flexibility to go with some bolder colors or bolder patterns because you don't have as much competition with the walls, right? You don't have to go build a beige wall to wall exactly. anymore. And I, to be honest with you, I've never had a white wall in my life, I don't think. And um, we just bought a new house last year, and I have every single wall is white. So I was able to go with a really nice, dark, like at this color, contrast, mm -hmm. because you can make a bold statement with white walls. So you have a, 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 a large capacity to do more design. And, and I like, you know, in this one, it's a big, bold geometric pattern. Right. But we're seeing a lot of the kind of subtle, more organic, your favorite word, patterns that just kind of flow. Like it's free, not yeah. a really distinct pattern that shows up. Exactly. It's a general movement. Exactly. Maybe into uh, maybe a little more of a botanical feel, some botanical colors. There's a lot of green hues coming out. But again, resting up here with these warmer hues. And the texture has a lot to do with it as well. When, when you are playing with with color and design, texture is a big deal. So you can create design with a very low amount of texture. We can we can do a, a what we call a pattern, but it's so random and so subtle that it becomes just a texture on your floor. 
So and, this and a lot is of those patterns can be accomplished with you know varied loops, pulled right? Pulled down loops. Yeah. So it's a combination of some loop fibers and some cut tip ends. So it kind of gives not only a texture but some durability, depth. durability, yeah, depth, uh, and still a soft feel with the, the cutting. Exactly. Exactly. And this is very transitional. So this isn't something that's going to put you into a modern look or a traditional look. Um, this this can go with quite a few different um, design modes because it's so transitional. And, and it a really lot becomes these, a texture. Well, a lot of these also are minimizing footprints, right? right. A, a big concern, especially exactly. as fibers go softer, they're not that 1980-something mm -hmm. tank that was made of carpet that didn't move. It was just so rough. Exactly. Car uh, fibers are generally softer now because that's what people are looking for. At, you know, they're they're shopping with their hands. They are. But it's living under their feet. They are. And 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 we'll get into fibers in a few minutes. But there is a difference between soft and and um, and what how fibers perform. So, um, but the, you know, the main thing is, is it's emotional buy. When you go out and buy, it's the same thing as when you're going to go and buy a sweater. It, it, you know, if you like the color and you like the way it, it feels, that is going to appeal to you much, much stronger than um, <clears throat> it's that textile feel. So the softness is a big deal, but also it really is the color and fabric has very, very large color lines. <clears throat> I spoke a, a minute earlier about custom dyeing. We also have the capacity to custom dye. So if you walk in and you see a color here that you wanted in Bangladesh maybe, custom dyeing is no problem. It takes about an extra two weeks, but it's really easy for us to do. Yeah, very cool option if somebody's very particular about it. Generally, Absolutely. though, when, you know, when I look at, at carpet, if you find a style that meets your, your budget, uh, your, your style preferences, usually there's going to be enough colors on the back, you're going to find something that works. Uh, and you know, we, we sample all these, so generally I look at uh, just kind of the style first before shopping for color. Right, right. Find your style, mm -hmm. find your feel, find your texture, and then we can usually work that color for you. And again, it's important to remember that these are textiles that we're, that we're walking and living on, right? Exactly. So we just need to have appropriate expectations for what these are going to do. And that expectation level is a huge factor. So Gary and I were talking yesterday. If you've got a house full of you know, three kids and you've got two dogs and a cat, and your expectations um, are going to be a little bit different than somebody that there's just two people in the household. So if you're somebody that does not enjoy footprints, you're definitely somebody that's not going to want to put Shea in their house. Now this is a very nice velvet cut pile, but it's going to footprint. Some people enjoy that. It's going to indent. It's a textile, and really everything is going to indent or show vacuum, vacuum marks. Oh, I, I uh, love that, because I can get my perfectly straight vacuum lines, as my wife can attest to. A little fantastic. compulsive? A little, a little bit, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, and I don't mind that either. It certainly doesn't bother me to see footprints, but some people absolutely don't want any footprints. That's when you are much better, expectation levels again, going with a pattern. These pulled down loops really help hide the footprints. Even more so are styles like this. So, Donegal is a shorter pile height, almost all loop. So this really isn't going to show footprints. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be very, very durable. Also, brand new is Silkweed. So it's almost, in fact, it is all loop, but it's also got a pattern going on as well. And it's got a barber pole yarn system. Mm -hmm. A little tonal. So the, yeah, so the multicolor is going to help as well with footprints, traffic, and soil. So really understanding what you want your carpet to look like on a daily basis and your expectations, what your, how your household lives will really steer you in the right way, um, how to pick out a carpet. So yeah, a lot of different directions you can go, right. but you know, we're, keep in mind that people have carpet, there's a, a function, there's a reason to have carpet for that soft comfort feel. You know, when you get hard surface throughout the house, it, it's surprising how much of an echo it can create when you don't have these things to soften it up. 
it's colder, it's harsher, so it's supposed to be a family. Right. You know, incorporating these, I know it's less of the total footprint in the home now, but again, <laughs> when you have less of it, you can do more with it. Right. right. You can okay. be a little more creative. So let, let's talk about the fibers a little bit, just let's quickly, do. quickly let's discuss do. them, because that, that plays a huge role in you know, how much you can pay for these, right. and, and also how they're going to perform. So I was thinking, starting with wool is going to be you know, some of the more ex one of the more expensive options in general, but it has the green story, right? What else? What it does. It's have? resilient. It um, it sheds soil better. Um, it um, you know, along with the green story, we also we have a whole line of wool over here. Um, the cleanability is great for wool. Wool is soft. Um, but I also enjoy the nylon aspect as well. Cleaning nylon is really, really easy. It has a, um, it has your, uh, um, your, your stain uh, resistance added to it, where wool doesn't need it. But that really helps in cleaning a nylon. If I have a family that, you know, there's, there's you know, it's a large family, I would rather see you put a high-end nylon in because it's going to clean a lot better. The, um, the soil is still going to sit on top, but staining is going to clean better. So a, a liquid stain is going to clean better on nylon. Right. So uh, talking about nylon, we saw that, that giant color palette. It <laughs> yes. accepts dye really, really well. It does. But that's also why you need that topical treatment to, co to cover up those dye sites so that you don't get stains on them, too. And it's not topical. It's heat set in. So go. even better. So it's during the process. So um, it's more of a permanent component. It is to the absolutely. Yeah. We have absolutely a question. Okay, question. Uh, which carpet performs best in a house with dogs and kids? Mm. I would. Well, you mean uh, fiber wise? Yep. I'm going to suggest a high end nylon, and and a lot of that has to do with the construction. Let's talk about construction, because Quick. yes. One thing when you're talking about kids and pets, I mean, there yes. are specific fibers and other considerations yes. that are made are. for pets. Pet I mean, you have protect. Stain Master Pet Protect yes. uh, that just has you know, different slightly construction and chemical properties that allow it to release hair better. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, just improving the cleanability. Uh, also, you have some options we're going to talk about later that you know can keep your spills from getting into your pad and your subfloor. So if you're really concerned about Dog messes, cat messes, kids, kids spills, messes. Yeah. you spilling wine right. late on a Saturday night. Not me. Uh, you know, keeping those from getting into a place where you can't clean them out, keeping them up on, on right. top of the on fiber top. so you can yeah. access them. So th those are some options. Um, you know, another fiber that I'll touch on quickly before yeah, we go into do. construction. You know, nylon, I think, covers most of the market, I would say. Uh, but you also have polyester that hits a better price point and is inherently extremely stain resistant. Uh, and you also have the love child, basically, of nylon and polyester that was uh, created a number of years ago called Triexta, or Smart Strand. So, uh, you know, there, there are different things, and again, it goes back to that conversation, what are you looking for, right. what are your considerations, uh, and then we'll find <laughs> one that, that, you know, fit, checks out all those boxes for you. But yeah, there are, there are multiple types of fibers, and the construction will go in. So talk about how all these mills create different quality levels of carpet, if you're working with the same fibers. And that's all about engineering, really. We will only use 6-6 nylon, which is your strongest available um, fiber to make carpet out of, other than wool. So when you start with your 6-6 nylon, we, uh, there's some very, very, there's a couple very, very basic important things to remember, and that is twist level. Nylon twists really well, it's resilient. So what you want is a really, really, really high twist level. So you want those fibers to be twisted all the way to the top, and if they're twisted all the way to the top, the better they're gonna spring back when they're stepped on. That only makes sense. So, when you've twisted all the air out of those fibers, then you also want to pack those fibers in. So that's called density. The density level is a huge factor, especially with something like a cut pile, because when you're stepping on the tips of those fibers, the density level is going to give you a support system and those fibers aren't going to lay over and go flat. And the twist level, back to the twist level, if they're tightly, tightly twisted, 
it's going to take more time for those to twist to bloom. And that's where your traffic patterns come in, is that density level and the twist level not being as good as it could be. Those fibers are going to lay over or open up and it's going to dull out and that's where you see your traffic patterns. So it's very important if you want your carpet to live and look beautiful for a very long time to get a high density level, high twist level, and, and a tight backing, right? the back. The back is huge. A lot of people don't spend a lot of time on the back. We have a high pick back and what a high pick means is that these leaves are very close together. So imagine that if you have a really tight weave here, you have more contact points for the latex to adhere to. So this is all about stability of your fiber. So the more stable your fiber is, and I'll go through all that again, but the more stable your fiber is, the better your carpet's gonna wear, the better it's gonna look a really long time. So stability comes with your twist level, stability comes with the density level, stability comes with your backing because you do not want your fibers to move. The less they move, the better off you are. So, and what, and finally, I was going to jump yes. into pattern. Yeah. Yes. Because that's going to be probably the fourth component that keeps your it carpet is. fibers stable. It is. Uh, I think I, I hear more and more people talk about, well, I'm going to upgrade my pad and get maybe a, or save a little bit on the carpet because it actually does play a role in, in kind of it helping does. the performance of that carpet. It does. So there are a few, and you know, generally there are certain requirements. You want it to be a certain thickness and a certain certain density, right? Well, it's not only that, but you certainly don't want it. The opposite is you don't want it to be below the expectations of mills. It actually even voids your warranty. So I, I was telling Garrett yesterday as we were talking that I remember my mom when I was nine or ten years old. We bought our uh, shag carpet that was green. And I remember mom saying she wanted a really, really, really soft pad on it. And it was probably a two or three pound pad. <laughs> she wanted that cushy feel. But that's really the worst thing that you can do. When I was talking about stability, one of the, one of the best ways to get the stability of your carpet is your pad underneath. So what you do want is you want a solid, very dense pad. And Garrett has some, um, some options over here but we recommend anywhere between a six and a nine pound pad and no more than a half inch high. So I love an eight pound pad. It can be a rubber slab, it can be a rebond, but something really dense, it's not gonna give you a lot of cush because you do not want your carpet to move. Right. So here's an eight pound rebond that you mentioned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's, a, that's a great starting point, I think, yes. for, for most people. You can go down to six pound, but that's usually kind of builder grade. So mm -hmm. eight pound, great bang for your buck. The step up generally is something that maybe incorporates some memory foam, but also has a moisture barrier on top. And that's been growing in, in popularity again because people have active lifestyles and families and we wanna keep those spills from getting into your pad and subfloor where you can't get them out. Those can reappear time and time again. Also rubber pad is, is probably the most durable option out there. So if you want longevity, a nice soft feel with still giving your carpet support, that's an awesome option. And then we also, of course, have uh, airy rug pad, which you know, we don't have a ton of time to talk airy rugs today, but we do have a specific pad for that that has your fiber side, also has your grip non-slip side. Uh, we stock all of these and, and a few more options. Um, they come in different roll sizes, but again, a consideration certainly when you're making these, these selections is getting a, an appropriate don't, pad. Yeah, don't skip on your pad. Because honestly, it's inexpensive compared to everything else we're getting. It's the base of your carpet, and it is it is inexpensive. And you're really not going to save any money or add much more money if you're going to put a good pad in. And it's really going to help with what you said, the longevity of your carpet. And carpet's not inexpensive. You have to move out of your house to get carpet in. It's, it's a process. It's um, it's a big deal. So it's, you, you really want it to make a make a last a long time. Do it right once. Do it right once. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do it right once. Now, and we mentioned earlier the, the trend generally due to HGTV, thank you, uh, which which is uh, great for us, maybe not as much for you, uh, but more more hard surface throughout <laughs> the house, right? Especially on the, on the, right. On the first floor. Right. Um, so that is going to create more demand for area rugs, Absolutely. correct? And so the beauty of area rugs is you can make one out of whatever you want. Right. 
any single carpet that we have here, we can bring in and have cut down and bound specifically to your space. Size. Any size, any shape, any edge profile too. So there are different types. There's a, anything from a simple tape bind in the color of your choice to- My favorite. Surging. Yes. <laughs> which is, I mean, tell us about surging. Well, it's just, it's wrapped thread. Either a cotton, it's usually a cotton thread that's wrapped around the edge of your carpet and it's just more sophisticated. It's just pretty or aesthetically right. pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, it really doesn't cost, it's kind of like a pad, it doesn't cost much more to have it surge. Right. Tapes. Yeah. Anything, I mean, basically right. you just pick a carpet and they'll have something right. to match. You can also take, you know, most most nylon carpet is made out of 12 foot wide boots. You can also make larger area rugs. You can seam pieces together and have larger area rugs. We do that all the time. And I've, I've had friends that will take the excess and yes. make little runners yes. or, or little walk-off pads for, for their kids' Absolutely. pads or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just utilize all that. So definitely something to keep in mind. There are programs, of course, where you can buy something kind of stocked at the mill in, in specific sizes. Yes. But I still lean towards getting the exact size that you want and kind of customizing it. Well, that's the beautiful part about doing it this way is you can order a 9.6 by you know, 10.7. You know, you don't have to, you're not locked into that size from a handmade or machine-made area rug mm -hmm. hanging on a wall. So you do get to dictate your own size. Um, and it's nice having, you know, picking out a carpet and putting it in your upstairs and then maybe having that same component or that same, maybe in a different colorway or a matching colorway put downstairs. Mm -hmm. So you do have that ability to pick and choose when you're doing a bound or a surge carpet. So there are a lot of carpet or area rugs there are. that are inexpensive. There are. Why would we spend more money to create one than just buy something off the shelf on Wayfair? For, well, for reasons that we just talked about, longevity mm -hmm. um, and um, the life of your carpet, the cleanability of your carpet. I mean, it's going to happen. There's There are disposable rugs and sometimes they're fun and they're in hot colors and vivid colors that you would never use and you know are going to trend out in a year and a half or two years. Maybe it's in your kid's room or something like that. And that's gonna happen and that's fine. But if you want something that's gonna live for a long time, and be beautiful for a long time, it's the same, the, the same thought process that goes into buying your carpet. So goes into your area rug. How should we be maintaining carpets? Oh. You need to vacuum, but you also need to know what vacuum to use. If you've got a higher cut pile, and you've got you've got some, you know, I'm, oh, Theabella, right in front of you, Teresa. So something you've big, big and thick. A chunky, big, thick carpet like Miabella. You need a vacuum that has an adjustable beater bar. You have to make sure that that head can come up so that those that beater bar isn't grinding into the top of those fibers because that's going to damage your fiber so we have the cri institute the carpet and rug institute has a whole section on vacuums what's approved and what's not approved and i won't say any names out loud but there are some vacuums as amazing as they are and as much as i love their commercials that are just too aggressive on carpet runs with schmeissen it does. Yes, yeah, I heard about that. I st still love mine, but I know. still they're, 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 almost, surface. they're almost too good. Again, yeah, just just exactly. too too aggressive, exactly. but with the beater bar and not that adjustment for height. Exactly. Um, if, if you tried something with that much suction that doesn't have an adjustable beater bar, it's going to be a heck of a workout on something sure. like this just to pass it back and yeah. forth. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we're, we're just trying to, to maintain it. There, there's a whole list of approved uh, vacuums on uh, the CRI website, which is carpet-rug.com. Um, it also goes through some of the, just the, the care and maintenance, like you mentioned, just finding the right vacuum, vacuuming regularly. Right. And then, and then, and then <clears throat> not everybody, and, and, and to be honest with you, I used to think the same way. Not everybody understands that you need to treat your textile like a, your carpet like a textile. It needs to be clean on a regular basis, and it needs to be clean at least every 18 months. <clears throat> and how we clean is with a hot water extraction, and it's pretty much steaming your carpet. And there's <clears throat> there are molecules in nylon carpet that 
it get reactivated with steam. You might think that it's not good for your carpet to do it, but it's actually great. The steam will reactivate those molecules when it flattens out and gets dirty and soiled. That um, hot water extraction actually will revive your fibers and it will stand straight up again and look beautiful and it's actually really, really good for your carpet. But you must do that even for warranty issues, which we don't use much anymore because it's usually not an issue. But you've got to take care of your, yeah. of your carpet. Yeah, just uh, proper maintenance, mm -hmm. um, a professional steam cleaning is really all you need. Something truck mounted uh, that has the proper suction to get all the excess water out also has the, uh, the appropriate water temperature mm -hmm. set to clean it properly. And you really don't want to add a bunch of detergents because no. detergents attract dirt. Can, and can so, leave a residue. so it's great mm -hmm. to pull the stuff out, right. but if there's anything left, it's going to attract more. Right. So it's going to be Therefore, dirty the hot water, water extraction. So. Yes, Perfect. absolutely. It's very simple. If you have any questions on that, I mean, it's always great to, to look up the, the warranty information just so that you're, you're following uh, and abiding those rules uh, on a case by case basis. But um, I think that's about it. I mean, I know that we can nerd out on carpets for, for days and hours. We talked over an hour this all over again. <laughs> so if you have any questions on this, Feel free to uh, to give us a call. Stop by again. All 14 of our locations are back open. Uh, we are doing everything that we can to keep this process safe. So we do have the remote connection options, the virtual appointments, virtual showroom tours available. Uh, call, text, email, uh, or even come by. And we do have uh, the spacing protocols that we're keeping in place, both for us and for all of our guests. And just want to make sure that it's a it's a safe experience for everyone stopping by any of our 14 locations. Um, so again, in summary, carpet is great. It's soft, warm, comfortable, all the reasons you want to kind of cuddle up on it. Adds extra design elements. That's true, really? especially with, with those area sure rugs. Adding something with a pattern or, or being more creative with that nice. uh, to make a statement is really, really cool. Um, again, what's hot is those patterns, those textures, getting into warmer hues and just opening the color palette. Right. We actually call it the fifth wall. I mean, this, this is kind of like art. Right. So, I mean, when you're looking at something like this, it is really, it really looks like art. It's really beautiful. So, next week, same time, same place, we're going to be talking about hardwood flooring. Uh, we also have a CEU on hardwoods next Tuesday, so keep that in mind. Uh, check out our events page for that, uh, cfmfloors.com slash events. And uh, I think that's it for today. So, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Carrie, for joining us. Gotcha. And we'll see you next time. Stay well.